Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Craft Beer Voyager Show. I'm your host, Michael Thacker. And today I'm here at the Legal Draft Beer Company in Arlington, Texas, here with the owner, uh, Greg McCarthy. Thank you for uh, having me today. My pleasure. And um, how's it going for you today so far? Been a busy day, just like they all are. Yeah. Good deal. And uh, you know, what, what, what exactly motivated you to start Legal, legal Draft? I always tell people it was a a really interesting combination of time on my hands, interest in the subject matter, and the arrogance to think that we could actually pull it off. (laughs) And uh, it's probably more true now than it's ever been. Yeah. Uh, It was just the right time, really, in my life to do it. Uh, Same for for my partner, Kurt. You know, we were, we'd been friends for a long time. We talked years and years ago about doing something like this. And never really got started on it because we had kids to raise and real jobs and all that kind of stuff. This is a real job, too. I mean, a full-time job back at the time. And then, really, five years ago, I found myself in a position where, you know, I was, uh, I had pretty much put down my law practice. I was still dabbling in a few things, but I didn't have a full-time busy law practice. I was looking for the next thing to do. And got interested in craft beer and and started getting into it did a little bit of brewing not a lot but a little bit of brewing at home and then I I started looking at it and I thought man this is this is a real opportunity there's a it's a time where uh Texas kind of had a hole in the in the craft brewery yeah yeah you know it was eighth and we still are I think uh eighth among uh, the, the 50 states in terms of just number of breweries but we're 46th per capita and you know, that told me that we had a lot of space out there, uh, a lot of demand for craft beer that wasn't yeah. getting met. Five years later, you know, I think even though we're pretty much the same statistically, uh, the fact is there, there's still a good demand for craft beer, and I think there's still plenty of opportunity for growth. Oh, absolutely, 100%. But, but the difficult part is... Um, you know, there's three times as many breweries as there were five years ago in yeah. Texas. Yep. But there's not three times as many shelves, and there are not three times as many tap handles. The, the market is is crowded, and it's really competitive. Um, and it's I, I feel for those people who are coming on the scene right now, yeah. trying to be large breweries, big distribution, that kind of thing, because it's... I'm sure that some of them will, will make it and do better than we have and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying that they're doomed to failure. What I'm saying, though, is it's going to be really, yeah, really, really tough, tough and that, competitive yeah. for the first couple of years for them. Yeah. And, I, you know, you've seen – I know there's been a couple of breweries that have went under over the course of the years. And, and some kind of prominent ones, too, that yep. really surprised, surprised me. Yep. Um, and I don't think we're done necessarily with that kind of shakeout. Yeah, no, no, for sure on that. And I know we have some new ones coming aboard. Um, there's been two, I think, in New North Richmond Hills, which would be good. There's a new market. There's nothing yeah. there. Yeah. Um, saw one in Roanoke coming about and right. uh, another one, I think, over in Fort Worth, which is getting a little crowded over there. Now, there's another been, one planned I heard on Sunday. There's another one planned in Arlington. In South Arlington, they're looking for space and all that kind of stuff. I thought I heard the same thing, but I thought it was kind of like a bigger. um, I don't know the the details. I just know that they have they don't have a license yet because they don't have a place. Okay, yeah. Um, But we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll hear something about it coming up soon. (laughs) Mansfield's got a second one with uh, by the horns. There's there's lots of them. And the you know space, like I say, is crowded. Yeah. The, the breweries that are coming out now that are the, the brew pubs keeping it very small, mm-hmm. limiting or just not even having any distribution outside of their own tap rooms, uh, they seem to be doing well. And in my humble opinion, they've got the best chance to succeed. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if they keep it small for the most part, yeah, yeah. sell all the beer they can right out of their tap room. Yeah. No, that, that's pretty interesting though that you actually had. I mean, so you 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 know became a lawyer before. I mean, that's what yeah, I've been. Licensed to practice in Texas and still am for so, 33 years. There, there's a, there is a story behind the legal draft deal. That, yeah. I, that's that's very interesting. I wasn't sure exactly if there was or not. I figured there was, but in the same time, I wasn't sure. <laughs> and that's really what it is. You know, it's it's a story that we can tell, uh, you know, about ourselves to our customers, uh, to the market. Um, about who we are and where we came from. Kurt's not a lawyer. Uh, 
he, he wasn't, you know, he, he jumped in really early, but it was pretty much right after uh, I had worked with, uh, with our creative director, Lauren Carter, to do the, the branding. And the big part of that was selecting a name because the name had to mean something. It had to tell a story. It had to translate to names and can art and T-shirts and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, it also had to, it had to travel. Uh, one of the reasons we stayed away from anything that was you know, hyper specific about Arlington, for instance, mm. is that would have been great until we get to Grand Prairie, yeah, Dallas, yeah, you know, Fort Worth, you know, and uh, it, then it, it means less uh, once you get out out of yeah, town and then out of the Metroplex. Yeah. You, it means even less. So, uh, and I suppose one of these days, if we ever expand to other states. If we were Arlington Brewery, people would ask me the same question they ask when I tell them where I live, and that that's always Virginia, <laughs> no Texas. <laughs> so it's oh uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, the big deal. Yeah, it, it was important to tell that story, and I I think it it helps. It goes a long way towards telling it. Yeah, well, y'all been doing pretty well so far. I mean, y'all just celebrated your third year anniversary, and sure it did. was very successful. And uh, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, and so it, it was really successful even with you know spite the despite the weather as far as that goes yeah and uh, uh okay yeah here in a second now everybody on the radio is hearing about peppa pig <laughs> <laughs> and uh but you know the, one of the fascinating things too is the fact that arlington was without a brewery for so long mm-hmm. until well division and yourself coming yep. into the scene yep. and making it happen and i you know Three years later, y'all are still the prominent ones in in the deal. And that's We're the only two in the city. Yeah, but, you know, I guess you you count New Maine. They've started producing, and they're they're in Pantigo, which is okay, technically yeah. part of Arlington. But okay, I'll see you later. Um, but they're uh, so New Maine has joined us. So now there's three. But um, yeah, it's it's been great. Division opened about six months before we did, and uh, they're. They're good guys. They make tremendous beer, and they've got a cool experience over there. Yeah, a completely just different niche. Very, in very different in, huh? in every way. No, you have to wait, Dave. <coughs> They're small where we're big. They're off the beaten path where our beers, uh, for the most part, the, the core and the seasonal beers we put out are pretty traditional styles and all. Yeah. They go nuts on hops and alcohol and barrel aging and sours and yeah, all that yeah. kind of stuff, which is terrific because. You know, if you had two of the same thing sitting across the railroad tracks from each other, it would be a lot less interesting than the Yeah, one exactly, got. absolutely. And, and they're they're great neighbors, they're good friends. We did a collaboration with them last year okay, of sorts. Yeah, cool. We we brewed the same beer off the same recipe, one at their place, one at ours. So uh, it's been really nice to see the the development of the beer scene in Arlington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there's you know you have old Tipsy Oak, you have uh, the little uh, beer bar. on tap. Yeah, on tap. And yeah, we've got. On tap, Cool Keg, and Brew City, all oh, okay, yeah. less than a mile away from here. Yeah, so there's just a little craft beer culture developing yeah. that wasn't there, what, like five years ago? Wasn't years there ago. really? Cool Keg opened up a, a shade less than four years ago, if I recall correctly, oh, okay, as yeah. a as a beer bar. Yeah. You know, they sold kegs and margar- rented margarita machines and that sort of thing out of that back corner of Gilligan's for a long time. But opening up where you could come in and sit down and have a beer... Uh, a craft beer on tap, buy a bottle, get a growler fill, all that. I think that was a little less than four years ago. And so, yes, all of a sudden, in, in the space of less than four years, it's it's turned into a pretty cool uh, little craft beer scene. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that's uh, that's really cool mm-hmm. seeing it explode just like that. And, yep. And, uh, of course, with you talking about uh, another beer possible showing up as well and yeah, and so we see a lot of growth happening right here in the place where. And I, I remember reading something, a couple like a year or two ago, talking about how really they were saying that Arlington wasn't a good spot for a brewery originally. So I, I can't even remember where I read it, but they were talking about that. You know, oh, it's not a very good location, even though it's in the middle. It's not, you know, it's more of an industrial type area, and it's not really. Uh, you know that good of a spot for Bury, but I mean y'all kind of proven that to be incorrect. Well, you know, uh, here's the interesting thing about about Arlington, and it really kind of goes back to two things. Number one, we have been the the place that's just overrun with with chain restaurants and 
sort of generic things yeah, for the longest yeah. time. You know, there, we had Fridays and chilies and goodness, goodness knows we got our share of Taco Bells and chicken places yeah. in town. <laughs> but we've never really, this town unfortunately never really in the past supported very many uh, independent, you know, one-off, couple in the chain, but, but uh, individually owned restaurants and, yeah. and bars. And, you know, there have been a, a few, but it, it wasn't the kind of town that would go support that. Um, it also, unfortunately, was a town where the, the downtown was, was pretty much demolished in the 1950s, uh, sadly. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the people who were in charge then apparently didn't like the look of the old buildings, and wanted to put up some new ones, so they demolished those for the most part and put up a bunch of buildings that were unfortunately early 1960s architecture. You know, concrete, monolithic, boring. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, just City Hall um, and the, the library and all the buildings around it just didn't have a whole lot of character. Uh, and what the other buildings around here had been for years and years is car dealerships. Uh, and then when everything moved to to South Arlington in the car business, all those car lots got down there. These turned into either abandoned, abandoned buildings or yeah. used car lots. And it just, you know, it, it didn't didn't have that that kind of thing where there was a an authentic old downtown. Uh, there was no town square to pull it together like McKinney's got. There was no uh, old railroad station sort of downtown like Grapevine's got. Yeah. It, it just, and there were no old buildings. Yeah, so, no central location. Yeah, it there. turned out to be strip center, suburbia, plain, generic, hmm. franchise, you know, chain kind of things, none of which had a whole lot of character. And so, you know, people would kind of criticize Arlington and say, well, you know, there's no place cool to go to eat, there's no place cool to go to drink. Um, we just drive in from Fort Worth or Dallas to go to the football game or the baseball game and turn yeah. around and go back home. And it was hard to argue with that. Yeah. You know, I wish I could have, but... People would ask where where there was a cool place to go get something to eat and drink before a, a baseball game, and I'd have to tell them, well, you know, stop in Fort Worth or stop <laughs> yeah. in Dallas. But now, um, and in large part because of division coming in and us coming in, um, you know, there's a, a real there, there's a, a real nice development and growth and influx of one off restaurants. Yeah, Tipsy Oak, Cartel Taco. Connie Rosso's coming in here. That's that's not exactly a one-off, but it's the farthest thing from a chain. To, yeah. You know, there's several locations, but that place is cool. And they land in, in cool, hip neighborhoods, and they serve interesting food and craft beer and that sort of thing. Yeah, bring a whole different crowd of they're, people. Yeah, right? they're going to be good. two doors down. Yeah, that's and awesome. S- and so they're, the stuff that's happening in downtown Arlington and the stuff that's happening over there in the entertainment district with the stadiums and stuff... Um, it's changing the the face of Arlington entirely. Yeah, that, that's that's great. That's that's a really cool deal, and it's amazing how just as simple as, as craft beer can kind of do that to a community, you know. And yeah, and it kind of brings the community together, you know. It, it really does. It it, it unites um, uh, all those those people who who really want to see the, the town develop and to become. Uh, the destination that it can be, not yeah. just a drive-in park, see the game, and go home. But when they, when folks come in for a bowl game or a, uh, you know, Auburn and Oregon are playing next in September okay, at, yeah. at AT&T, the first week of the season, and now people will have an option. They don't have to come in and stay in Dallas and drive to Arlington yeah. for the game and turn around and go home. They're going to have a, a first-class, full-service hotel, uh, the live by Lowe's, where they can stay, they can go to Texas Live to eat and drink. They can come over to Urban Union, where we are, for sort of uh, smaller, uh, homegrown and hometown-owned businesses like Tipsy Oak and Cartel and us uh, to spend some time and, and see a different part of the city. They can spend the whole weekend here, have a lot of fun. And they don't have to leave. Yeah, exactly. Which they don't is, have to venture off. And which is them. cool. And if they want to go to Fort Worth to go to Sunday yeah, Square exactly. or to go to Trinity Groves or Uptown Dallas, sure, that's 30 minutes away either way, 20 down to Fort Worth. Yeah. Uh, but they, they have that option to stay here instead of just, well, there's no place to stay. I'm going to have to go stay in Dallas yeah. or Fort Worth. And, it's, and there's 
there will be options like us again too. So they've got choices, which is great. Yeah, that, that's awesome stuff. Uh, you, what kind of like vision do you have for legal draft? You know, for the coming years and everything of growth. And- you know, for there's two really two two different things really. Uh, one is the tap room, and and I see this place growing. Um, in a different kind of way we're i don't think we're ever going to be the place that's open until midnight uh, and i don't think it's going to be open seven days a week part of that's because i want to avoid competing with our customers you know, yeah. if i sell beer down at tipsy oak and a cartel and a grease monkey and a twisted root and at restaurants and and bars that are going to be coming in across the street when they build those things it kind of makes me feel funny to to then say, well, you know, we're going to be open up yeah, as exactly. late as you yeah, are. Yeah, I kind of have your own specific hours. Yeah. And, and the second part of it really has to, to do with where I think the growth in our tap room is going to continue to, to to come, and that is in events. It's it's a really cool event space. Yeah. Um, I think we're booked every Saturday night except one between now and October oh, wow. for birthdays, wedding receptions, class reunions, uh, all that kind of stuff. And if we if we have a, an event from seven until eleven thirty or twelve right now, we just close the tap room at six, hustle everybody out of here politely, and turn the room, and then the people start coming in right after those people come out and they, they set up their catering and their decorations and off they go at seven. Instead of that, we, if we were open until 10 or midnight on Saturdays as a rule, we'd have to post the sign just permanently. Sorry, we're close tonight for a private event. Um, and so it makes more sense to us to sort of have those limited hours with those, those limited hours. I really do think the growth is going to come from holding special events here, we might expand the hours just a touch, but just in terms of opening earlier on the weekdays well, that we're open. Well, at the same time, I mean, it helps these, these local businesses. Sure. You know, hey, you, are, you want some more drinks or whatever, go over and have some food, have Absolutely. some drinks right over their neighbors over yep. here and walk a distance. And yep. You're set. And, you know, Friday afternoons, we're, we're open during the baseball season now at 2 o'clock. And what we're hoping that means is that we, we get the people that go to lunch at, at Cartel Taco, and they walk over here. After they're finished with with lunch, and you know they just they want to they see that we're open, they're they're just going to hang out and chill instead of heading back to work on a Friday afternoon, and they come over here and have a couple beers with us. Yeah. The other part of the of the vision, though, for for the brewery and, and the company has to do with our our presence in the market um, and our growth plans out there. We we'd like to take advantage of the next couple of years. I think we've got opportunities to to do some uh, to put some big growth numbers up uh in 2019 and 2020 if we do that we're going to start running out of room to grow because you know it's hard to double it, if you go from a thousand to two thousand that's really great yeah doubling ten thousand to twenty thousand is harder than one to two yeah for and sure. doubling twenty thousand when you just doubled from ten is really hard to do. Yeah. So you know we're gonna we're gonna try to, to take advantage of those chances we're, that we've got here in the next couple of years and 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 uh, get a little deeper and a little wider out in the market, uh, be on more tap handles, uh, be on more shelves, and uh, and see if we can just continue to grow that part of the business yeah. like we have the first couple of years. Are y'all going to try to branch out to uh, outside the DFW area? Have y'all done much of that? At We're all? already distributed all over the state of Texas. We have we have beer in, in stores from uh, El Paso to Texarkana, uh, from, oh, okay, yeah. from uh, Sherman all the way down to Galveston to the Valley, West oh, Texas. Oh, wow, good, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're in our, our four biggest markets are DFW, San Antonio, Houston, and Austin. Oh, okay. But we've got we've got our beer distributed by distribution partners in all of the all the markets in Texas, really. Yeah, that's that, that's good. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're speaking about events. What what kind of events do you all have coming up uh, for the most part? We've got a big one on Saturday. We've got a friend who's a, a regular here. Uh, his name is Reed. Reed runs the the uh, Harle- the Husky Rescue of Arlington. So he, he had takes in fosters, Alaskan Huskies, uh, Siberian Huskies until he can find them a permanent home. And then, um, 
you know, he actually owns nine of the dogs himself. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and he usually comes in here with two or three of them. Yeah. And so this Saturday is a is a big benefit event for his husky rescue. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're going to give him a, a percentage of the beer sales, and he's going to take donations. And we're going to go twelve till about nine that day. Um, and he's got he's going to put a stage out in the parking lot and close off half the parking oh, lot okay. festival style. And it's going to be five metal bands, one after another, metal cover bands. Yeah. And the, the headliners, call, they call themselves Rock and Roll Over. It's a Kiss cover band. Complete, oh, wow. with, cool. complete with costumes and makeup and pyrotechnics and the whole thing. And so, oh, wow. Um, that should be an, a, a nice big day for us. Um, you know, in terms of other events, we, gosh, we do, we do a big 4th of July parade and fire watch, fireworks watching thing here on July the 3rd. Oh, okay. uh, the city of Arlington puts on its parade on the third, and they do a big fireworks display. And, and our patio has got probably the best the best view in town. And you can drink a cold beer while you're at it. Yeah, exactly. Um, we'll do uh, a big Cinco de Mayo celebration. We'll do a big Oktoberfest celebration. Um, you know, people can go to our uh, website at legaldraftbeer.com. dot uh, com. Check out what events are coming up. You can sign up for uh, for our email, which comes out a couple times a month. We don't bombard people. And it tells you what's going on in the tap room and special things that are going on out in the market in Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, that sort of thing, so that people who are interested in going to a tap takeover or some other special event at, a, at one of their favorite bars that carries our beer, they can they can do that kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's awesome, man. I'm definitely expanding on that, and you'll have yeah. a lot going on, a lot on y'all's plate. <laughs> we do, you know. Uh, Kelly stays busy. She coordinates all of our events, um, and it's you – know, we have – regular things too every other friday we have either bingo or trivia oh okay yeah um we do uh, something called uh donuts and drafts where we get funky town donuts to oh, make okay yeah, yeah to make five small donuts and they and we pair them up with a, a flight of beer um i think in a week from sunday we do we're going to do another one called bunts and brews which is little tiny bunt cakes oh okay yeah um you know, we just there's something going on. There's dog rescue things. There's um, yoga, both with and without goats and puppies. There's uh, there's a, a lady who, who comes in and does an art a painting class, and she calls it flow painting. You basically drop the paint on the, the canvas and then tilt the canvas this way and that to to make it run. And it's sort of abstract art. So we got bicycle rides that start from here and end here on Saturday or Sunday mornings. Uh, and they, when you get back here, you uh, hang out with your your cycling buddies and drink a beer. So we've got yeah. we got all kinds of stuff going on, pretty much continuously. There's a uh, there's live music at the tap room every Saturday, some Sundays, some Fridays. Oh, okay. Um, and we'll even throw in the occasional Thursday. Yeah, that, that's that, that's so. awesome. Really involved with the community and yeah, and everything, yeah. getting it's, everybody together. And and yep. of course, you had the the dinosaur. Uh, exhibit thing going on here yeah. last week that was pretty interesting that was actually pretty cool I, yeah. I, i'm into that kind of stuff so i didn't know they were digging actually in the city of arlington <laughs> yeah wow that's that's pretty i cool. thought they were going to tell us some stuff about you know out in hood county and green yeah. or something like that and i thought huh <laughs> my dog and i go walking right through those places <laughs> where they were seriously where they were digging for dinosaur bones next time you're gonna be you know looking at the ground looking to see what oh hey wait a minute that looks like a no wonder Harley wants to stop and sniff so much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, is, what is that in I your mouth? A, I smell a T-Rex here, Dad. Let's yeah. see how much I can sell this for now. Exactly. <laughs> Auction <laughs> off. That's it. <laughs> That's yeah. good stuff. I, you know, uh, I, I know you all been you know doing some test batches and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, you, is there anything else you all are going to come out with? Yeah, center? you know, we're... We didn't start off to be that brewery that <clears throat> yeah, wants to do of, a different beer every month. Yeah. But we've been in... It's been 36 months this month uh, that we've been brewing beers, and we have 36 different kind of beers that we've made. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, plus a root beer. Uh, so we're, we're, always, we're always doing that because even though we didn't start off with the idea of being the, you know, the, the big variety and something new all the time, and you know, we haven't done anything with Fruit Loops in it or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. yet. Maybe we will <laughs> at some point, but um, there's always... There's always somebody who comes in or comes to the store seriously every single day, and their first question is, what do you have that's new? 
Yeah. And, and you know, my read on the, the craft beer market is that it's it's difficult to get somebody established as a loyal customer to a brewery or to a particular style of beer that that brewery makes. But if you can do that, that's wonderful. But it's hard. What what they really do want. Those, those craft beer aficionados, they want to see what's new. They want to yeah, try something yep. different. And if you've got that, then you got a chance to have them pick up that six-pack at the store. But they're going to be looking for the new stuff, too. And if you got something new, they'll get both. Yeah. Um, so what we're doing, you know, at the moment, we're working on uh, some test batches of our hazy IPA that we call Hazius Corpus. Uh, we have a seasonal that comes out, a different seasonal that comes out every two months in okay. in draft and in, in packages. Um, and that one currently is a mango colch called Let That Man Go. Uh, May 1st, we'll have our, our Mexican lager uh, for the first time. It's called You've Been Cerveza. Yeah. <laughs> Then we've got a summer shandy. We've got Oktoberfest beer coming out in uh, late summer. Then we'll have a, a fall lager and our, our usual um, Christmas beer called Legal Holiday. Oh, okay. And then we'll just start all over again next year and, and do that that seasonal every two months. Um, and we, we've got a barrel age program that's been okay, running yeah, for I'm about a year. Yeah, so we've been... We've been barrel aging things. The only thing we haven't, well, I shouldn't say the only thing, but we haven't barrel aged a stout yet. Oh, um, okay. Which kind of seems odd because. Yeah, that, exactly. That's like the main thing. The most popular. Yeah, yeah, it's the most popular kind of beer to, to age, especially in a whiskey barrel. But we've done a couple of, uh, we've done a whiskey barrel aged IPA. We've done a gin barrel aged IPA. Hmm. We call ginned up charges that we're going to have it at a beer event uh, in Washington, D.C. next month called Savor. Oh wow! Um, it's a food pairing, food and craft p- beer pairing event that the Brewers Association put on, and we won a lottery to get in. And we were sending them ginned up charges and uh, our gluten free, gluten removed uh, lager called Free and Clear. And uh, to my knowledge, I read through the program the other day and saw the list. I think those are the only gluten free or gluten removed lager, and the only gin barrel aged beer that are oh, in the good. competition. Yeah, in, it's not even great. a competition, but in the in the event. So. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just we're trying to, to kind of keep on the edge, keep innovating a bit. It, it's hard because you know I, I'm not sure there are any real original thoughts. Certainly that that I can come up with. <laughs> Every time I think we've got a beer that's really unusual, you go look and you can find somebody that's done it before. But yeah, that's yeah, okay. Sure, you always. know, just something new and different and um, and cool looking and uh, with a catchy name and a, a good package. And you know, people give you a chance that way. Yeah, absolutely. That that is for sure. Well, that's cool. I mean, a, as we kind of close here, what what's some advice you would give to you know new brewers seeking out to build their own brewery? You know, well, right now because of the stuff we were talking about earlier, the how crowded and competitive the market is. I, I tell this to the people who ask my advice or who show me their plans for their brewery. Right now, if I was going to open a brewery. I would make it a very small, definitely a brew pub, yeah. community gathering place style of, of outfit. I would not try to to have a big brewery that's got lots of capacity, and the, inst- the stated purpose is to go and you know get on the shelves all over the state of Texas or all over the southwestern United States. That can be done, yeah, um, but it's a lot harder to make it a good. Uh, healthy, profitable business than the first model. You know, if I was going to do that, I would I would have a 2,000 to 2,500 square foot facility that included brewing space, tap room, bathrooms, office, the whole thing would be certainly under 2,500 feet. I'd put it in a, a neighborhood that was walkable and um, I don't know how important it is that the neighborhood's cool, but I would have it in, in something that's not. Yeah, a you strip. can always make it cool. You yeah, know, yeah. Kind of, <laughs> you know, I would. I don't know if I'd go for a strip center, but I might go for a strip center that's been abandoned, or yeah, you know, a wing of a strip center that's abandoned or something. But there's a lot of different. Kind places. of what the Turning Point did. They're over in exactly. an abandoned strip mall area. You can you can put it in a lot of different places as long as it's a <clears throat> place that's accessible. Yeah, and in your city and your community kind of are in a position where they can get there and they can support you. And I wouldn't sell a drop of beer for the first year outside of the tap room. Yeah. And then for the second year, I might draw a circle about a half a mile across 
and uh, and I would make a promise to myself that we would only distribute to bars that were inside that circle. And um, you know, if I if I couldn't put it in the back of my truck and haul it over there in just a couple of minutes, I wouldn't bother with it. Yeah. And it's really just all about economics. You know, the, you're gonna the folks out there who drink craft beer are gonna pay six or seven bucks for a pint of of craft beer mm. and if they pay that to you at your brew pub you're making a whole lot better money than if you're selling it to somebody at a bar who's going to sell it for the same price because they have to make their money as yeah well. exactly and so it's uh it's one of those things where i think that's the i think that's the recipe and the formula for success here for the next little while for people who are going to open up a brewery yeah um and if anybody out there is just plain determined to have a brewery that's you know, big scale and big distribution and big growth plans and all that. Um, you know, if there's, if that's just what you've got to do. Come talk to me. Yeah, <laughs> I get a little you know, bit this stress. <laughs> well, you know, and if if you're if you're that determined, we might talk about selling you this one because it's <laughs> um, it's one of those things that that would be a whole lot easier to sort of pick up in midstream you'd be able to look at history yeah. you'd be able to, to your customer base your distribution channels everything's already in place and it that's an awful lot of heavy lifting yeah for uh, sure for the, the startup of the business so yeah um, it's uh, it, it would be a huge challenge uh, and I uh, I both uh, commend those people if they're determined to do that sort of thing and I wonder how, how wise they yeah, <laughs> are being sure. at the moment it, it is definitely challenging with how, how much it's been booming. I mean, with so many breweries just opening up. And and, uh, and, and a lot of people in Texas are, are still, especially in, even in the DFW Metro, are still pretty new to craft beer. They are. A lot of friends I have, they every time, it, it, the funniest thing I always say to everybody, I'm like, oh, yeah, I say craft beer. They're like, I don't like dark beers. Like, that. no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. It ranges spectrum there. Well, they don't like, <laughs> the they don't like beers with all those hops. Well, yeah. Okay. We got There's a bunch of different here. flavors and variety styles and yeah. colors and stuff. And sure. It, it, it's pretty funny. I always try to introduce people. And as soon as I do and they try it, they're like, oh, oh this wow. is fantastic. I'm like, there you go. Some of them stick with it later on, but a lot of times they're like, oh, I got to stick Some with my Dos Equis. I'm like, Dos Equis? I can go pee in the bottle if you want to and give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> <coughs> yep, yeah, it's uh, it's a task at times to get them to get the, the domestic or import beer drinker to, to wander over to, to craft beer, and yeah. it's a, it's a task at times to keep them once they have wandered over. Um, and you know, honestly, that's not even the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge is retailers and distributors um, for for brand new breweries. The distributors don't. And I don't blame them. They don't want to sign up a brand new, just out of the box brewery that doesn't have a proven track record. Oh uh, yeah, true. To a distribution deal, they want to see how that brand's going to do and how well it's going to catch on, and let them sort of get the brand off the off the ground, and then they can help them build it later on. Yeah. Uh, and retailers are the same way. Bars are the same way. They they want, and I don't blame them. They want something that they know is going to sell. And I, I really am thankful for those bartenders and bar managers and retail outlets who take a chance on us and other craft beers because that's what it is. It's taking yeah. a chance. Once they buy the beer, it, that's their beer. And if, if it sits there and the keg's still half full six months from now, you know they either have to fire sale it or dump it, and they're the ones who lost the money on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I, I get it. It's, it's, a, it's a real... Um, it's a real challenge to get those those folks to believe in you and, and to give you that opportunity. And it's it's pretty cool when it happens, but it yeah. doesn't always happen. Yeah, I think one of the big problems too is the fact of uh, informing people. Uh, you know, unfortunately, retailers and and e- even some bar owners don't really know how to inform people about craft beer a lot of times, and that they're not really sure themselves. They don't even drink it themselves. So. Yeah, and, and they're the ones who are selling our product. Yeah, to the exactly. And it's it's. It's a big challenge to educate those people about what we do and who we are and how they can relate that to their yeah. to their customers. Yeah. Well, Greg, I really appreciate you taking your time and everything. And uh, yeah, everybody, if uh, you get a chance, you got to come over and check out Legal Draft Beer Company. 
um, uh, over here in Arlington, Texas. Awesome people, wonderful beers. Uh, you won't be disappointed, that's for sure. <laughs> Great. I appreciate so, that. Come over and check it out. And uh, uh, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, take care and cheers. Cheers.